Hi, I'd like to talk about crank balancing. In this drawing, we have um, the piston, the conrod, and the crank wheels. The piston has only a vertical movement. The crank wheels only a rotational movement. Um, because of the design of this, the, the top speed of the piston is in the mid-range. As it goes from the mid-range to the top, it slows down, and then it speeds up, and then it slows down, and then it speeds up. And so as a result, from about 80 before top dead center to 80 after top dead center, you have a vertical force, a vertical inertia. It's like trying to stop something that's already moving, and you're pulling back, you're holding back the reins on it. So that movement is in, that, in the direction of that movement that you're trying to stop. That's what inertia is, a change of, of, um, of movement or an in initiating movement. And you have the opposite when the piston is at bottom dead center. So that upward and that bottom movement is countered by a counterbalance force, which can either be opposite of the crank pin or holes close to the crank pin. But what happens is when the piston is in the, the mid-range of its movement, you still have this centrifugal force of the counterbalance weight and so if we perfectly counterbalance the vertical movement all we would have left is horizontal movement and it would be it would be too much the vibration would be too much so we have a compromise between counterbalancing the vertical movement and not having too much horizontal movement and that's as good as you can get on this basic method of counterbalancing. Uh, so what we have is the old method of 50% of the, the conrod and the piston counterbalancing weight at, at the same um, same radius as the uh, crank pin. <clears throat> or you can use my my Excel sheet that counter that it calculates no matter where you have the uh, the holes at, whether or not because the holes are farther than this distance from the the center, they'll have actually more force. Holes here create an imaginary weight here. Well, it's not imaginary; it's true. I mean, if you cut the, the wheels in half, you would have more weight on this side than this side because of the holes. So, um. This is a picture of the crank of my 55cc engine and the two holes that it came with. And this is a, a graph of 360 degrees, zero being this mark right here, top dead center, 90 degrees after top dead center, bottom dead center, 9 degrees before top dead center. 360 degrees, you can see the movement is more vertical than it is horizontal. So the vibration was significant. It was not pleasant at all. After I put a 9mm hole right here and on both sides, of, on both, both of the crank, half, crank halves, this is the resultant uh, graph of the 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 forces on the uh, on the crankshaft which is almost perfect the ratio of vertical to horizontal forces that are as good as you can get is 0.85 <clears throat> this is the graph when it is 0.85 which is almost exactly the same as that so there's a good margin of for error good leeway and um, on my uh, my program, uh, it shows it graphs the vertical forces here, and then it adds it to the horizontal forces to create this graph here. The blue graph being the upper assembly of the the piston, rings, bearing, pin, and this section of the uh, conrod. The counterbalance force due to the, the holes is this orange graph here. And the connecting rod is the green graph. 
it it dips right in the middle top dead center and bottom dead center because as that movement gets close to that it, it becomes more horizontal than it does vertical and so it loses the vertical force um, this green graph is a is a composite of, of these th three added together and then the red is an average of the green graph assuming that because of frame inertia you wouldn't feel every little spike of uh, force deviation this is a graph showing um, the force throughout all 360 degrees that every 15 degrees you look at the crank wheel divided into 15 degree sections that's what it looks like the idea being maintaining the average of these forces as low as possible and the deviation from from high to low as low as possible how I was able to calculate the uh, the connecting rod force and graph it here I sectored the the shaft into four sections and assumed all the weight of each section was centered right in the middle and then I graphed those four on paper and I figured out the arc and the radius for each of those that each 15 degrees and I put those those factors into the, the program. This shows uh, the movement of all four sectors, the top one being most vertical and the bottom still being more vertical than horizontal, which is why the Conrad adds a significant amount of vertical force. On, on my bike, it's 71% of the vertical force of the piston assembly. Okay, it's late at night and I'm tired, but I want to get this video done and out of the way. Um, I just, uh, a few hours before now, finished the fine tuning of it so that it agrees with two engines I've had, or well, one I still have. Uh, I show here that at top RPM, it is. Uh, it's um, balanced and the balance that this is showing is um, above the above the zero line means that the vertical force here is greater than the horizontal force here uh, this right here is of my motorized bicycle that I rode for a couple years in Ecuador a 55 cc engine this is it right here and it vibrated a lot until I drilled a hole in the crank wheels and um, this is this is a picture of the crank I'm talking about right here is the hole I drilled the first one I drilled was 7.2 millimeters in diameter on both both crank wheels and it still had a little bit of vibration okay and then I went to a larger hole I went to 9.2 millimeters and you can see the graph now it zeroes right at about 7500 which is about 1500 RPM below the top RPM. So anywhere from there to having it zero at the top RPM, I consider a good balance for the engine. And um, let me see what else I wanted to show you. Uh, this is a, a home test for whether or not your engine is balanced or not. And by balance, I mean relatively speaking because when the uh, when the engine's running hold the, the spoke on here ideal size is about 20 from about a 24 inch uh, bicycle wheel and uh, you can see it vibrated up and down or left and right 
if it vibrates up and down, that means the uh, the vertical. Um, it means there's a lack of of counterbalance. In other words, the holes in the in the crank need to be bigger. When it vibrates left or right, that means there's too much counterbalance, and the holes need to be smaller. Which you can you can fill them and then re-drill a smaller hole. On on my bike now, only at about 2,000, 2,500 RPM or so, does it vibrate a little bit in this direction, a little bit forward. But all the rest of the RPMs, it's smooth as silk. So, um, like I said, this is my motorized bike that was a little bit unbalanced. And I'm going to show you what I did to balance it. I drew the hole out to 9.2 millimeters. And this is what I got, and it was smooth. I could look out the rear view mirror and actually see what I'm, what was behind me. So, uh, from this, and let me show you my Suzuki. My Suzuki does the same thing, and both of them are fairly well balanced. I'm, I'm estimating that probably you could set the balance anywhere along here. The, the zero where it zeroes out and the reason it, it does that is because the the, um, the up and down inertia of the piston has it in, increases at a different rate than the outward centrifugal force of the, um, the imbalanced uh, crank and so where they where they cross in a balanced engine is where those two forces cross if you were to, if you were to graph them out yeah these these two examples are really good uh, to show what it is you're 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 targeting I guess I show you a picture of my Suzuki and um, yeah so it works I think it's uh, I think it's good um, I'm I'm entering into the this is a low compression ratio because the, right now the rings are worn and what matters is the uh, the cranking PSI and so the compression ratio uh, estimates the PSI and it goes by that uh, the the higher the compression ratio um, or the PSI the higher the uh, the forces will be which will be over here the purple chart over here. Let me show you that right here. This is a graph of the vertical forces. This purple is the combustion force. So the higher the compression ratio, the higher this force is. So that's figured into the the uh, the calculations. And what else? The exhaust port is also figured into it when it when it drops off when that port opens also this the cylinder bore because the 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 more piston top area that is the more force is actually delivered to the crank for the same amount of uh, a psi in the cylinder S which is why big bore engines put out more power than small bore engines even though they may have the same um, combustion pressure inside the cylinder Okay, my friends, I think that's about it for now. You know where to reach me.